What's up guys, it's Gary with Fresh From The Farm Fungi. I'm here in Denver and it is day six on our breeding project and we're starting to get a lot of isolates. So I labeled a couple of them yesterday and you can see that overnight there's about 14 or 15 colonies of this pink oyster. Um, we're also starting to see a few chestnut colonies show up. They're pretty faint at this point, but I'm gonna be keeping an eye on those. And I kind of wanted to um, label all of the isolates and then I'll go through transferring them onto the mini Petri dishes. But before then, I wanted to go over um, some contaminant that I found and some of those plates from early on. I just let them grow out and right there you can see some penicillium which um, it's important not to transfer your isolates when they're too young because it's hard to decipher between some of these colonies and penicillium but especially on this streak plate you can see the morphology like right where my finger is right now so that's what you want to look for it's kind of an irregular shape this one's almost in the shape of a heart and that is how you're going to differentiate between that colony and a younger penicillium but if you just wait a couple days the penicillium will start to turn green in the middle and you do not want to open this so i'm going to go ahead and biohazard all of these plates from early on that you can see that they got taken over with bacteria but i will go set up and then show you how I transfer my isolate colonies onto their own plates. And I'm gonna go ahead and label all of these kind of as they appear. Um, we've got two or three colonies that were from yesterday and you can see all these new ones. So I'm gonna label them kind of by size too. And then they'll start have their own Petri dish to grow so they won't overlap. All right. Okay, these are the colonies that were there yesterday. So I'm just gonna go ahead and start labeling these. All right, so I'm down here in the lab. Um, I got my three uh, plates for pink oyster mushroom or Pleuratus dejamer, and all my isolates are circled and labeled. Um, so there's a couple different methods that you can do to take your isolates and move them onto their own Petri plates. Uh, it's important that you do this at the right timing because if you wait too long, they're start, gonna start to cross over with each other. So that's why it's important to check your plates daily and then label them. Um, so if you have kind of larger isolates like what I have with these pink oysters, um, you can either use a scalpel blade with a handle, which I'll show you how to do that, or you can use these sterile loops and just kind of pluck a colony off with the loop and then streak it out on its own plate. Um, so that's really helpful if you got a lot of contamination, you didn't get any plates, and or you didn't get any clean plates and you still wanna collect those isolates, you can be really precise with that loop and go for whatever colony or if you're you know trying to isolate a clump of colonies that are kind of on top of each other you can use the loop to really go in there and ideally 
you would want to be flaming your loop and cooling it in between every transfer or if you're using a blade you can flame your blade and cool it off and then select a new isolate. Um, I usually just use a fresh scalpel or a, a fresh loop um, just because it saves on a lot of time flaming in between. Um, but that's a you know the ideal method. I'll show you one of each and I've got a lot of isolates to do so I'm going to go ahead and um, start getting ahead on, on all of my isolates and I'll just show you the pink oyster because that is what we have the most of and um, they seem to be doing the best so I'll go ahead and flip this camera around and I'll do like a first person view and at the very end I wanted to go over my incubator someone asked about that um, so I'll do that at the very end all right okay, so I've got my hood cleaned down and I'm just gonna do an extra spritz of alcohol before I get started here and I'm going to be working with the cleanest plate first. So to me, that's going to be this one. Um, it only has a couple colonies up top. And since they're a little bit smaller and clustered together, I'm going to use my sterile inoculation loops. Um, so this is, I'm going to label my plates A, B, and C according to cleanliness and then out of this plate A I'm going to be isolating two of these colonies there's a lot more right along the edge but those aren't really separated out well so I'm just going to be focusing on the ones that are clearly defined um, I have plenty of other colonies that I can be using so that's not a huge deal So, first thing you want to do is take off your parafilm. And number one is the one that is closer to the middle. So no, the number one colony is going to be closer to the middle. That's what I'm going to be isolating first. So I'll just flip this over. You just want to get enough on there that Okay, so now I'm going to be going for that second colony that's right in the middle. Alright, so I've got my two isolates from this plate labeled and ready, and I'll set those off to the side. And now I'm going on to plate B. Alright, so I've got plate B here now, and I'm going to use the scalpel to take this colony here. Um, it's a little bit larger and more irregular, so that's, you know, the ideal colony that you're looking for. And then I'll go on and take two, three, four, five five from this plate.
Okay guys, so that is the update on day six. Um, I just made about 18 isolates of this pink oyster and I'm going to parafilm these and put them in the incubator which is 72 to 73 degrees for about four or five more days until these isolates grow out and then I can either put them in the fridge and slow down that growth until I'm ready to introduce them to each other or whenever these are um, done growing out we are going to systematically introduce each isolate to the other one on a larger petri dish and that way the two haploid isolates which this only contains half the amount of genetic dna as um, a full mycelial mass so in order to create viable mycelium we're going to have to systematically introduce these isolates to each other so that's the next step um, right now these are going in the incubator i'm going to also isolate the rest of those uh, strains from chestnuts and piapinos and I don't know if any of the lion's mane is going to survive but hopefully I get a couple isolates of lion's mane and I'll go ahead and incubate those and grow them out and then we'll reintroduce them in the next phase but before I head out I just wanted to go over my incubator which is right over here. Alright guys so this is my incubator here it's a really basic model i was lucky enough to get it free from a friend of mine um, but basically it's, it's called precision scientific super generic name but these are really important especially when you're doing projects like breeding or um, when you're promoting your mycelium on auger uh, incubators are nice because they hold um, a really really specific temperature so I have mine set right here, it has an analog dial. It's set in for 72 to 73 degrees and it's totally insulated and it has uh, little filaments in the bottom that heat up to the thermostat to whatever temperature it's at. So it doesn't actually cool, but it will only heat um, the inside of this air until it reaches the temperature that it's set at. So then I'll open this up and you can see it has a nice rubber gasket which helps keep the temperature very stable and then it has this glass viewing window so if you're growing out liquid cultures like these you don't actually have to open it completely and that way it keeps the inside of your incubator nice and clean um, and it doesn't cause temperature swings which some mycelia can be really sensitive to temperature swings or you can start to see concentric growth but this glass is just another layer of protection. So then I'll go into this and this is how I stack all my plates upside down so any condensation goes to the bottom. And then I've got a couple liquid cultures that I'm just waiting on the QC um, before I go ahead and use those. So that's my incubator, it's super basic. I clean it out uh, with alcohol about once a week and you can see how tight this space is which makes those little plates even more valuable because I'm going to fill this up in like the next 24 hours with isolates and um, they'll probably be stuck holding the rest of my production for about four or five days while those isolates grow out and then I'll transfer those over to the fridge. I got my mini fridge here and then I also have a larger fridge where I keep um, all my reagents and my my slant cultures and any backup plates in case something happens with these but that's my incubator so um, let me know if you have any questions and give me a thumbs up if you're enjoying this content um, share these videos if you think anyone else would find them useful uh, subscribe if you're looking forward to more videos I should be having um, some of the last stages coming out through fruiting and um, yeah, email me if you have any questions or leave a comment below and I look forward to the next process. So thanks guys for watching. Much love.